Hi everyone, welcome back to learnautomation.com. This is Mukesh. So in this video, we are going to continue with data driven framework uh, part two. So in the last, uh, let me show you. So in the last example, we have covered how to create a data driven framework using 2D array. So this was our script and I hope everyone have gone through the previous video. If not, then you should refer the previous video in which I have covered the script and how to log in with multiple username and password using 2D array. And we have seen also like uh, right now we are limited to these three set of records. So now we need some mechanism so that we can get the data from Excel and we can pass here. So now in the previous video in which we have covered like how to read Excel sheet and how to create library. So this was our program. So again, if you have not gone through the video in which I have covered like how to read Excel sheet using Apache POI. So I have covered the same code here. And this is our small Java file, which simply read an Excel file based on the parameters. So I'm not going to explain this code because I already covered in the last video. Please refer the video which says is talk about how to read Excel using Apache POI and how to create library. So here we have the Java class which simply will accept the Excel path. So whatever path you will specify, it will simply accept, it will load that file and it will read that workbook. Then we created one method called getData. So this getData method accept three arguments. One is the sheet number, row and column. So based on your sheet number, it will return you the sheet and using this get row get cell string cell value it will return you the data so this is the method which actually will help us to read the data from excel now today we need to create one more method here which will simply return number of rows in that excel sheet so we will create one method called public return type i will specify in teaser and the reason is because I will write a small logic that will simply return the number of row in that Excel sheet. So I will give the method name is get row count. Now we need count for a specific sheet, right? So I will give an argument here called integer sheet index. So whatever sheet index user will provide, it will go to that sheet index and it will return the number of count. Okay, so uh, we already have the sheet one. Okay, so right now we are not dependent on sheet. So I will take this WB variable. So WB dot. Now we have a method called get sheet at. So what it does, whatever sheet index you will provide, it will simply get that sheet and I will call one method called get last row number. So what it will do, it will return you the number of rows you have and it will not return the exact count it will return you the index number so now let's say if you're having 10 rows it will return you 9 because it is start with the index 0 so let's say it will return you uh, let's say row but i want the exact row so what i will do i will say row equal to row plus 1 so whatever count it will return i will say plus 1 because i need the count not the index and i will return this row from here so this method is ready which will simply return the number of rows based on the sheet index and we have one method which will uh, get the sheet index row number and column and it will return the data so this is our script that we created last time with wordpress login i will not modify this i will simply copy paste so that you should not mess with the old code so wordpress login Excel. Let me remove this copy off and simply click on OK. So this is our new program. So this part I will not change because this part will be exact same. Only this logic will change. So let's start. Uh, since we have to deal with Excel data config and these methods are non-static. So you can see I have not written a static here. So these methods are non-static. And as per the Java rules, 
if you have non static method then you need to create object of this class then only you can access these methods right so uh, what I will do I will create one object of this first so if you have static you can directly call them so if you don't want to create object then let me show you how you can do this uh, let's say public okay let me try with this then in the next example maybe I will show you if you want to create a static method then this constructor will not come into picture so as of now we have one constructor which simply load the workbook and it will return you this WP object so what I will do I will simply create object of this Excel data config so Excel data config equal to new Excel data config it will ask you to import this so I will put mouse over and I will say import Excel config that is coming from lib folder and it says you need to provide the Excel path and the reason is the constructor will ask you give me this Excel path right so what I will do I will create one so this is our project right I will create one folder here called test data sorry I give in the name folder let me delete this or let me refactor this so folder name I will give as test data inside this test data I need to create one excel sheet and I will give the test data that we have used in the previous example so I will right click on this test data folder I will go to property and it is present under C drive this particular folder learn automation test data so I will go till this location so this is the location and uh, right now it's folder is empty right so I will simply create a new Excel sheet uh, which will contain the test data and input I will give the Excel sheet name is input data so this is Excel sheet close this I will specify the test data so let's say one test data is admin password is demo12 another is admin password is demo123 and one more credential dem uh, admin demo1234 so now I have three set of records and we know this set of record is valid and remaining two are invalid so I will click on the save button now our excel sheet is okay so we have given the uh, location here that is uh, excel sheet location here now using this object let me remove this config dot get row so I'm giving zero here zero means uh, I need to get the uh, have to take the data from the sheet if I have multiple sheet let's say sheet 2 sheet 3 then this will change to 0 1 2 and so on right now my test data is located at sheet index 0 so I will specify get row count 0 so this will return me the integer that is number of rows so I will simply specify here right because every time data will change so I cannot make this static static entry here this should be dynamic now this logic we will remove because now I need to write a for loop that for loop will start with 0 and it will go till the number of rows we have so I will start with 0 1 2 3 right so if, if we have row count as 4 it should go from 0 to 3 so I will start with integer i equal to 0 and it should go less than equal to rows then i plus plus why less than because it will return me 4 and I want to start from 0 1 to 3 if I go till 4 if I press equal to so it will give me array index of bound exception because it will not be able to access the fifth record so make sure it should be less than now this small uh, diagram which I want to explain I think we already have this here so let me create a fresh one so right now we have an excel sheet that that contains the data that is this excel sheet 
and internally we have this data provider and this will automatically declare because here we have given rows right so rows equal to four so four rows two column so internally you will get this kind of a structure in memory okay zero 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 one one zero one one and so on so now we need to copy this admin into this particular box so this is the way I will say data I need to specify I here why I because right now I will start with zero right so it will be zero zero now I need to get the data from Excel and I need to store here so I will say uh, config that is object and I will say get data so sheet number will be zero because our data is located under sheet zero now column will be zero now row row will change based on the i value so at first iteration i value will be zero so at data zero zero it will call this method and it will say zero 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 that is nothing but your admin so it will take the admin from the this location and it will store in the data provider in the same way I will write one more line of code so what it does it will uh, this time we will say column as one because I want to take the data from Excel sheet that is demo one two that's the reason I changed to this because it accept sheet number that will be same row will be same for that particular iteration and column will change to one so it will get the data from Excel sheet that is nothing but demo one two and it will store here that is data 0 1 so demo 1 2 so once this uh, statement will complete again I will change to 1 because we have I plus plus so it will be data 1 0 it will again run this this time I value will change to 1 so now control will go to the second row it will take admin demo 1 2 3 and it will store here admin demo 1 2 3 and so on so the main task of this for loop is to get the data from Excel sheet stored in the 2D array and once this loop will complete definitely you will get this data ready and once this data is ready remaining logic will same it will simply take the data and it will run right so let's get started let's run this and uh, right now we having only um, one username password in case if you want to provide some more details like um, email ID phone number then you can specify more columns here and in the same way you need to specify parameters here so right now we are using username and password but in case if you are taking more parameters you need to specify here and you can use across the test I hope it's clear for everyone so let me run this and this time our test should run four time let me save this so it's running and it will start taking the data from excel sheet so as we discussed earlier when you specify data provider data provider will always execute first and it will uh, create the test data now it's passing into the application so admin demo one two yes it is failing because it's not the valid username password yes it is closing as well and you can see the real-time execution here this time it is taking demo one two that is coming from Excel sheet so let's wait one more time this time it will get the actual data that is real credential admin demo one two three and this time it will log in you will get dashboard page and this test will pass demo one two three and now if you go here you got the message page title verified user is able to log in successfully and yes this green symbol is indicating the same thing 
So let's wait two more minutes. Let it complete. And now if you want to make it little bit advanced, like if test is failing, it should take a screenshot, right? Then we have another logic. Uh, so if you have gone through the video, which I explained uh, extent report version two. So if you want to implement this kind of feature, like if test fail, it should take the screenshot as well. So you can implement the same logic here as well with the data driven and it will create very awesome report with screenshots. So yes, I think we're done. All four records completed. So total run four, failure three. Three time you will get unable to log in and uh, yes, one pass, three fail. So looks, it looks quite good, right? It uh, simply uh, runs test cases based on the number of records you have. So in the next uh, uh, video, that is part three, I will show you some more advanced features with some reporting as well. And if you want some default, uh, default reporting, you can get in the test output folder. If you refresh it, this test output is ready and you can see this. So this is the default reporting, only one passed, which is coming with demo 123. And you can see every time we are getting parameters as well. Parameter which we used here is at demo 123. The parameter which we used here that is coming from Maxell is admin 1, demo 12345, and so on. So it's very good <coughs> reporting if you don't want to implement the advanced one. So default reporting is also good. And uh, in the part three, we will talk about some advanced feature of this DDT. So I hope you understand this concept. If you have any doubt, we can discuss. And if you want any specific uh, feature which you want to implement, you can let me know. So let's see whether we have covered everything or not. Read Excel and pass data to script. Sorry, create test data, read Excel and pass data to script. So I hope this video is useful for you. You can start implementing the same in your project. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.